Doyle's Law, Charles Law, and James Yass Law. We're going to start off with Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law is the relationship between pressure and volume. So remember how yesterday combined gas law was the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. Today, Boyle's Law is the relationship between pressure, volume, at a constant number of moles and temperature. So now we're making two of them constant. Here's what happens in this formula. All of the formulas are kind of derived from the combined gas law, or they were used together to create the, gas, the, the combined gas law. So I'm going to show you how it breaks down into Boyle's law. P1, V1, T2 is equal to P2, V2, T1. Out of these three variables, which one is now constant? T. So we can say, because T is constant, T1 is equal to T2. So this is what it looks like now. P1, V1, T1, because it's T1 is equal to T2, is equal to P2, V2, T1. Because they are on the same side, if I were to divide T1 on either side, it would cancel both of them out. This will then give me I should say Boyle's Law. This will then give me Boyle's Law, which is P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. <laughs> okay, let's uh, do a little bit of an example. A sample of carbon dioxide has a volume of 15 liters at 110 kilopascals. To what must the pressure be increased to change the volume to 12? Okay, so we're looking for pressure. Just like yesterday, I want us to list our variables. P1, V1, P2, V2. P1 is equal to 110 kilopascals. V2 is 15 liters. P2 is what we are looking for, and V2 is 12 liters. Okay, so from here, we're going to use the formula. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. We are isolating for this guy here, P2. So I will divide both sides by V2. V2 cancels out here, and I am left with P2 is equal to P1, V1, V2. From here, we sub in the values. 110 kilopascals multiplied by 15 liters, divided by 12 liters. Cancel your units. Liters cancels out with liters, and I'm left with kilopascals. Does this make sense? Yes, it does, because we are looking for pressure, which will be measured in a unit of pressure. When you plug this into your calculator, you will get an answer of 138 kilopascals. Let's get used to boxing our final answer. 138. We're going to answer some follow-up questions about this. What do we notice happens to the volume? Does volume increase or decrease? It decreases. Volume decreases. Okay? Pressure is now 138. What happened to pressure? 
pressure increased. So that is something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and answer these questions. If pressure equal is increased, what happens to volume? It decreases. <clears throat> so now I'm going to kind of go over the relationship of pressure and volume in boiled water. So the question is asking, what is the relationship between pressure and volume when temperature and mold is constant? Very, very specific. This only happens when temperature and mold is constant. Draw a graphical representation as well. So what happens is, if pressure increases, volume decreases. Okay? Vice versa. If volume increases, pressure decreases. Okay? This makes sense. Let's say I have a container of gas. Let's put four moles of gas in there, okay? And then I increase the pressure. So this same container, I have now decreased the volume, and those four moles are sharing a smaller area. That's why the pressure increases. They're closer together. Here, we have our same four moles in a container, and then... I put them in a larger container, and those four molecules have more space, which decreases the pressure. Okay, that's why pressure increases when we squish something down, and decreases when we increase the volume. This is another way for us to represent this relationship. So we can say pressure is inversely proportional to volume. This guy here, that fish-looking thing, means proportional. Because I put one over volume, that means it's inversely proportional. Same thing here, volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Let's write this relationship in words. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. That means if one increases, the other decreases. The other decreases, the other increases. Sorry, one last thing. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume at constant Oh, constant moles and temperature. All right, let's look at a graphical representation of this now. You will be asked to identify graphs of a certain gas law. So, let's say we have volume and pressure. As pressure increases, volume decreases. Same thing here, pressure, volume. As volume increases, pressure decreases. Let's do another example. A sample of methane gas at 105 kilopascal has a volume of 25 liters. The pressure is decreased to 95 kilopascal. What is the new volume? So P1. P1 is 105 kilopascals. V1 is equal to 25 liters. And P2 is 95 kilopascals. And V2 is our unknown. We are looking for that final volume. So we use our formula. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Okay, from here we are isolating for this guy here, V2, so I am going to divide both sides by P2. <coughs> On this side we cancel out, and V2 is equal to P1V1 over P2. 
plug in some numbers. 105 kPa multiplied by 25 liters divided by 95 kilopascals. Now, looking at what happened to pressure, did it increase or decrease? It decreased. So what do we expect to happen to volume? Increase, right. So let's cancel these units out. We are left with liters. That is what we want. When you plug this answer in, you will get 27.6 liters. Round it to three significant digits. Oh, it should not be just yes, three significant digits because this one has four sig digs, this one has three sig digs, and this one has three sig digs. So our lowest number of significant digits is three. Therefore, our final answer needs to be three. Okay, I want everybody to try this one on your own. A 30.7 liter sample of hydrogen is at a pressure of 590 millimeters for mercury. The sample volume drops to 25.6. Will the pressure increase or decrease? I want your pressure to be in units of millimeters per mercury. No, not kPa. Okay, I want this. Don't do it in millimeters of mercury. Yeah, don't do it in. Okay. I'm going to just walk through this and then I'll give you a couple minutes in transition to finish this up. So, considering what's happening to the threat to the volume, is volume increasing or decreasing? Volume is decreasing. So, what will happen to pressure then? It'll increase. So, pressure increases. Okay, here I have the solution set up. I have my variables laid out, my formula isolated. Once I plug everything in, I should get an answer of 708 millimeters of mercury. This makes sense. Liters cancels out. My units of interest are millimeters of mercury, and that should be my final answer.